Hello, my name is Felix Wachholz and I'm a PhD student at the University of Innsbruck and part of the neurophysiology group of Professor Dr. Peter Federolf. And today I want to show you what you have to bear in mind when you import data and what is important when you import data in the PM analyzer. And I will start off by running the program. So I'm already in the folder where the function is in and I will press run to open my general user interface here, the GUI. And last time in the very first video, we saved a struct as you can see here. And I will load up the settings that we saved by copying this path into the GUI here. So I just copy paste it and then I press load and then the test setting appears. And when I press now change to select it, everything will change to the settings that we actually already uh, have produced last time. And if I would now take a look into the data here, so have, this time I have two folders, so it's data cut and data uncut. And last time we used the data cut that is in this folder right here. And if I would now press run, everything would actually happen in the very same way as it did last time. And I want to show you this time how the data looks. So if I open up the Excel file here, you see quite a lot of data. And as you can see, there is really just data, nothing else. And that's, for example, why we have for the header lines here, we have a zero because we do not have to cut out any header lines or we don't also don't have the uh, delete columns function active because we don't want to delete any columns. So just bear that in mind. So that's how it looks when the data is kind of prepared already. And if I would now like to run the GUI using this data, I would again just take the path, copy paste it into the path here in the GUI. And if I would now press start computation, we would get the very same results as we did last time. But I would like to show you something a little bit different this time. So if I go out and take a look at the data uncut here, it looks a little bit different. So first we have a naming or a coding in front of the actual way how we name our files. So we still have the subject number one, trial number one, and subject number one, trial number two, order of the names, but we have something in front. And we also have the data here as it comes out when you export it from, for example, Vicom, the system that we use here at the Institute. And if you now take a look here, you have like one, two, three, four, five header lines and you get a lot of information from here already. So here you also get the sample frequency. You get to know which marker is which position and you get all the information about the position and uh, also the range. And to give an example, uh, how it would look if you make it a little bit more in a, yeah, let's say ordered way or in a uh, yeah better prepared way, if you take the data here and put it into different colors, uh, columns, sorry, then you get an idea how it actually looks. So it takes a while. You have here, here actually starts the data. So you have the left forehead marker, X, Y, and Z. And then you have the positions, the coordinates of these markers in three dimension. And here, for example, you have also information that you don't need for the analysis. So for example, the subframes or the frames. So that's information that you don't want to analyze in the end. So you actually want to cut it out. And you don't need to do this by hand. You can use the GUI to do this for you. And I want to show you how this is done. So keep in mind, we have five header lines and we have also two columns in front of the actual data that we don't want to work with. So I will close this here. I won't save it because uh, we have the delimiter here and we use the comma and then I don't need to prepare the file as well. So, but let's go through it. So we again call it first run. That's fine for us. We have this time subjects one until two. This is fine as well. We have subject one and subject two with four trials. 
let's this time take all four trials. So we take one until four. And now we come to the data uh, name prefix. And that's in this case, the standing. So whatever you type in here is what you have in front of the normal way how you write the files. So this, in this case, we have standing and the undersquare and you have the file names. So we take the standing as a prefix. We keep the CSV because we still have CSV files here. And as we know now, we have five header lines that we want to delete or cut out. So that's why we type in five here. Delimiter is fine. Then we have a sample frequency. Let's check that again uh, because we have 150. Just to remind you, that's right here. So we type in the 150. Markup post processing is fine because, because we have 39 markers uh, in a three dimensional space. And rows to expect, we just go down here and we quite had a lot, have a lot of data. So we can type in 19,000. It does not really make a difference to be totally honest, but just to make it in the perfect manner. And we also want to keep in mind, we had these two columns in front that we also want to delete. So that's why we click here, delete columns and cut out the very first two. All right. So I will, the rest is fine so far. We know it from the, um, from the analysis we did before in the first video. So I will just now start the computation and I will be back in a minute. Uh, and if you have been quick, you could see a little mistake of mine because I'm still in the data cut folder and we want the, da the data out of the folder uncut. So I have to change into uncut here and now we can start the computation. All right, here we are again, the GUI computation finished and we can close all our windows and it seemed or well, it seems that everything worked out fine but just have a short look so we take a look here at our original motion and how this looks and it looks quite fine so far so let's see when the computer decides to run the video how the motion looks like. So here we are, and that looks quite okay. Let's also have a look on our plots. So if we go to the all plots folder and especially the score plots, then we see how the motion looked like. I will drag it here into the field where you can see it. And now you see something interesting here, and that has to do with the data set that uh, we used now because Actually, the participants were standing quite still. Then they were asked to shook their head for 10 seconds, and then they were asked to stand still again. And right here, you see the shaking of the head in the principal accelerations, of course, as well. And I will use this now to show you a feature you can also use for implementing or for importing the data. So if we take a look on the data again, so I will open up the very first file again and this time I will again split it up to show you something okay go on comma and let's go and if we now make a drawing out of just the very first variable the very first coordinative there we are uh, the very first coordinate we will now make a drawing of that data and then we will see okay we have here the shaking of the head and it appears to start around yeah 4200 maybe and it was ended around 6400 so we just keep in mind 4200 and 6400 then we will close it again without saving and now we will delete the rows here. So we just want the file to, or the, the analyzers to analyze the data where we just have plain data of the standing. So quiet standing, no shaking of the head. And therefore we delete this here and we had 4,000, let's tap stop on 4,200. 
until 6400 and that will cut out the data where the shaking of the head took place. And to also show you one more feature, I will use the delete markers feature and this is basically deleting or cutting out markers that you don't want to be uh, visualized. And to, to do this, we, uh, or for uh, yeah, demonstration purposes, we will cut out the whole head of the figure and we do this by uh, excluding the one, the two, the three, and the four. So that's the, yeah, the first four markers are the head. That's um, at least for Viking the case. And yeah, let's now start the computation again and let's see how it looks afterwards. So, uh, and one last thing I forget, since we don't want to overwrite the data we already created, I will rename this here into second run and now I will start the computation and then let's see how it looks. All right, the computation was successful again. And again, we take a look in the second run folder. Let's first check for the plots um, because we wanted to cut out the head movement. And if we take a look here in the score plots now, we can see that there is still an acceleration going on, especially in the first component, and then it gets smaller. Um, but we can see this range where we had a lot of head shaking for 10 seconds is gone. And if we take a look on maybe some higher principal accelerations, we can see that there really is almost nothing left. So the cutting out seemed to was successful. And also to give you an idea how the videos look like now, we go for the videos and take first a look on the original motion. And since we cut it out the first four markers here on the head, we should not see a head as we just do. There is no head here and also in the, ex uh, in the principal component videos where we can see the single components as visualization, we also uh, missed the head. So the cutting out of the markers that we wanted to be cut out was successful. And yeah, I hope the video helps you to understand or to get an idea how the input process works in the GUI. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email. And if you like the video, feel free to like it and subscribe if you want to learn more about the principal movement analyzer. And yeah, that's about it. And I, sh I just say goodbye. See ya.